Hi Scotland, it's Nicola here. We're about to kick off our Westminster campaign right here in the Hydro in Glasgow. I need you to be as fired up and ready to go as you were during the referendum campaign so that we can send a strong team of SNP MPs to Westminster to hold the London parties to account, to make sure they deliver on their promises. Let's get out there, let's do it. She'll be the most accessible First Minister ever. So let's call her onto the stage. Please welcome our new party leader, the First Minister of Scotland, Nicola Sturgeon. If you don't, if you don't sit down, I might sing. I thought that would get you seated. Wow. What an amazing end to a momentous week. It is fabulous to be here in the Hydro. Thank you so, so much for that incredibly warm welcome. What an atmosphere. <laughs> what a privilege to be here in this magnificent venue in the wonderful city of Glasgow, the wonderful, yes, voting city of Glasgow. You know, the first time I ever set foot in this venue, I watched Scotland win a Commonwealth Games gold medal. And believe me, to hear Flower of Scotland belted out in here at top volume was very, very special indeed. Maybe we should try it later on. And then the last time I was here, I debated in front of 10,000 16 and 17 year olds. That, that was an amazing experience though I don't think George Galloway enjoyed it very much. <laughs> Friends, the young people of Scotland were the stars of our referendum. It's time to let them vote in all elections. <laughs> you know, I... I really didn't think the noise and the atmosphere in the hydro that day could ever be beaten. Turns out I was wrong. I'm told there are 12,000 of you in here today. So let me hear you, all 12,000. Tories, you certainly frightened me with that noise. <laughs> Ask yourselves this, when did an indoor political event in Scotland last attract 12,000 people? The answer is never. Not for the first time the SNP is making history.
And friends, it proves that right here, right now, democracy rocks. I have to say, I have to say though, it is a bit daunting for me to think of some of the greats of entertainment who have stood on this stage in recent months. Rod Stewart, Kylie Minogue, Lady Gaga. Don't worry, I am not going to sing. I, I promise you. Though I believe we did book the place out faster than any of them. Yeah. Friends, we are an incredible, dynamic, growing movement for change in our country. A truly national movement seeking to build a renewed and a reinvigorated Scotland. A movement with a clear message for Labour, the Tories and the Liberal Democrats. Power over Scotland doesn't lie with Westminster anymore. It lies in the hands of the Scottish people and that is where it is going to stay. Every single one of you here today is part of that movement. Some of you have just joined the SNP, the warmest of welcomes to each and every one of you. Others have been members for many, many years and my heartfelt thanks to each of you for all that you have done. And some of you, Some of you aren't members at all, yet. But I hope you will be before you leave here today. Because my message to you, and indeed to everyone across our country, is simple. Come and join us. Come and be part of the biggest grassroots movement for change our country has ever seen. You know, I can't begin to tell you what a massive honor it was this week to be nominated and then sworn in as the First Minister of Scotland. The first woman First Minister of our country. leading the first gender balanced cabinet ever in these islands. <laughs> to be given the trust of our party and our country is enormously humbling, especially when I am following in the footsteps of a leader as remarkable and outstanding as Alex Salmond. Alec transformed Scotland. He made it a better, fairer, more confident and more dynamic place. My pledge to you today and to all of Scotland is this. I will carry on with that work and I will build on his legacy. The Scotland... The Scotland we see around us is bursting with hope and with opportunity. I know that we didn't win the referendum, though my goodness, don't the parties on the other side look for all the world as if they lost? <laughs> and what bad losers they look like too. <laughs> Friends, I can't tell you how much I wish we had one. But I can tell you this, and I believe it, with all of my heart, we will win one day. Scotland will become an independent country.
And even though we didn't win this time, I can tell you this beyond a shadow of a doubt. Democracy did win, and so did Scotland. The people took control of our future, and they do not want to give it back. The desire to see positive change and social justice now burns across this country. By its own passion and belief in itself, this ancient nation has been made young again. And nowhere. Nowhere is that growth in confidence, that desire for change reflected more strongly than in the membership of our party. Now, as you heard earlier, this afternoon there were 90,263 members of the SNP. Now, I think that's pretty good. But when it comes to SNP membership, we live in a fast-moving world. <laughs> so I thought you might like an update. Am I right? Yeah. I'm glad about that because I've been dying to tell you that as of five minutes before I took to this stage, membership of the Scottish National Party stood at 92,187. <laughs> Somebody just shouted at me, 100,000 by the end of the day. I'll settle for 100,000 by the election next year. Let's make that happen. <laughs> Friends, one in 50 of the adult population of our nation is a member of our party. That is incredible. We have, we have more members than the UK Liberal Democrats and UKIP combined. We reach, we reach into every workplace, every street, every community, every faith group, every pub in our country. We are now truly, truly the National Party of Scotland. And let, let me be clear that as First Minister, I will govern for each and every part of this great country of ours. We will work to empower our great cities, to renew and refresh our towns and to bring a new spirit to all of our communities. Land reform will mean much needed changes in the highlands and other rural areas. Our, our islands better able to meet their own distinct needs and priorities and for all, there will be radical social protections, a huge increase in free childcare helping parents to return to work and giving our kids the best start in life. New funds for our NHS, mitigation of the hated bedroom tax and a pledge that whenever and wherever we can, this party, this government will work to protect the poor, the disabled and the vulnerable. This is... This is social democracy in action, progressive, vibrant, and with purpose. You know, the Liberal Democrats are meeting today in Dunfermline. I think, I think we might just have the edge on numbers. Though, though to be fair, I'm told their phone, bo phone box is full. But, but at their gathering today, I understand that Alistair Carmichael is going to lecture me about tackling inequality. <laughs> yep, that's right. The man who sits in a cabinet with the Tories imposing policies that are impoverishing tens of thousands of our children has the audacity to lecture me about inequality? Well, my message back to Mr. Carmichael is this. 
Your government is one of the biggest causes of inequality in our country, and it's time. It is time. It is time to get power over social security out of your hands and into the hands of the Scottish Parliament. Which, which rather neatly brings me to the vow. Remember the vow? That promise of substantial new powers made by the unionist leaders? Well, hear me when I say this. We intend to hold the Westminster parties to that vow. It was the power of our vote that forced them to make it and be under no illusion. It will be the power of our vote that forces them to keep it. And make, make no mistake, they need to be held to account. The backsliding started almost before dawn had broken on the 19th of September. The Tories trying to link laws in Scotland to votes in England and Labour, Labour, that once proud party of progress, offering even less than the Tories. They're dragging their heels, trying to get away with giving us as little as possible. Their policies are bereft of any imagination. You know, even now, even now as Labour's poll ratings go through the floor and they descend into infighting, they fail to learn the lesson of history. More powers are not theirs to give. They are not anyone's to give. They are Scotland's to take and take them we will. Friends, the only people in Scotland who can't see that Labour have failed are Labour themselves. Labour has taken this country for granted for far, far too long. For generations. For generations, they have promised gold and delivered ashes. Well, let me say this. We must not, we will not, let them be a roadblock to a powerhouse Scottish Parliament. I know, I know that many, many Labour supporters voted yes for a better country or voted no because they wanted more powers. Today I ask them to consider this. Victory for the SNP in the Westminster election next May will keep alive that dream of a better country. If Westminster parties win, they'll go back to business as usual. The promise of more powers will evaporate, the vow will be broken. But every SNP MP that we elect will turn up the pressure for the delivery of substantial new powers. A vote for the SNP is a vote for Scotland's interests. It is as simple as that. So I, So I humbly and respectfully ask Labour supporters to lend us their vote because that way and only that way will they win the socially just country that we all seek. And friends, if Labour do win power at Westminster, and it is an if, we will hold them to account at every turn. If they want our support in a hung parliament, then I've already made our demands clear. More powers for Holyrood, an end to austerity, and let them hear this one loudly and clearly from the banks of the River Clyde today. No new nuclear weapons. Of course, of course, the Tories might win again, regardless of how we vote. 
After all, that's what's happened all too often in the past. And if that happens, make no mistake, Scotland won't need Labour MPs who care more about the trappings of Westminster power than they do about the pursuit of social justice. Scotland will need strong SNP MPs standing up for our interests and fighting our corner. You know, I think Labour will pay a heavy price for their cosy referendum alliance with the Tories. I think they'll pay that price this year, next year, and for many years to come. But that, that is for them to worry about. One of my first acts as SNP leader was to make this pledge, and I make it again today. We will never, ever put the Tories into government. Our job isn't to back them. Our job is to stand up to them at every turn. So you don't need to vote Labour for Westminster to keep the Tories out because that is what we'll do. Friends, the old, the old Westminster system doesn't work for Scotland. We know that all too well. But you know what? It doesn't work for many other parts of the UK either. So let me be clear, if we send a strong team of SNP MPs to Westminster, we will seek to build alliances with progressive forces across these islands. And in light of my, in light, in light of my commitment to gender balance, I'm delighted to say that two of these progressive forces are also led by women. The wonderful Leanne Wood of Ply Cymru, And of course, Natalie Bennett of the Greens. <laughs> Westminster, Westminster be warned, the age of female politics is here and it's not going away. And before I forget, a message to our broadcasters. You should probably pay attention to our voices must be heard in the general election television debates. <laughs> Friends, this is, this is a great time to be alive in Scotland. Our democracy is more vibrant than probably anywhere else in Europe. Debate is flourishing. SNP branch meetings are flooded to overflowing. There is an unquenchable demand for vision and for good government. Scotland is a restless society, but restless in a positive way. Constructive, expectant, informed and engaged. As First Minister, it's my job to listen to and to meet the expectations of all of the people of this country. More powers will give us more leverage to make this country a better place. But there is still only one master key which unlocks all of the doors to a better, fairer, greener and more prosperous Scotland. And that key is independence. I believe with all my heart that we will be independent. When that will be is not up to me, it's up to the Scottish people. But make no mistake, it will happen. As your First Minister, as your First Minister, and not just yours, First Minister for every single person in this country, I promise you this, I will work tirelessly for you, for your families, for your communities, and yes or no for all of Scotland. We are already a better nation because of the referendum. Now let's work together and move towards the Scotland we seek, an even better Scotland, a Scotland equal amongst others in the world, a Scotland where every child can fulfill their potential, a Scotland where dreams do come true. Friends, history is with us. The wind is set fair. 
We will build the Scotland our people deserve. Let us now get on with that job. Thank you very much. Scottish. Nicholas Sturgeon.